here it is, the Yuko Candle Lantern, the original, the one that started it all for me and got me excited about lanterns and candle lanterns. Whether it was DIY and bushcraft or something purchased from the store, this is not my first one. It's my second one now for this type. About 10 years ago, I got one, and it lasted right up till about a year ago, and then the globe broke. Then I discovered I need to get a new globe, of course, but it was 15 bucks for a new globe or 30 for a new lantern. So I just picked up a new lantern and thought I'd take it out, give everyone a look along with me, and then we can compare that with all my other lanterns. And stay tuned. I'm going to have a special video where I do that all at once, go over the pros and cons from my perspective. Love to hear from you. And then I'll have a special look at a special candle lantern that I'm sure you folks, if you really know your Yuko, are going to guess about. Come on along with me. Let's uh, take a look in the daytime at the Yuko in, in the daylight, and then we'll come back out and light it up. See you in the backyard. <sighs> Once you got it out of the cardboard box that it comes in, uh, this one's shiny new. You pull that right up, it's ready to go. Little chain, and a hook, you can hook that on the top of your tent. Put that right up top there. The little bale handle is going to protect your fingers. This gets very hot, so don't touch it when it's lit. You're going to sizzle a bit and not be super thrilled. Packs down nice, blow it out, let it cool off, then pack it down. Um, so. Take a look at this one. It actually has the glass. And inside, this reminds me of a bullet. You've got your candle. And you've got the casing for the candle, the sleeve that it slides up. Push that up, and the spring just pushes that up. And as it burns, it just keeps pushing up. These are supposed to go for eight or nine hours. I've never really timed it goes long enough, I'm not using it the whole time. I'll go more than a weekend. Or so down there. But a little cap, this reminds me of a bottle cap, and it may be a solution to how I fix my problem that I have with my other lantern. A spring, it's kind of attached here at the bottom, twisted in there. And we've got a little bit of a, a notch here on these to help us when we put this on top. So you probably want to flip it upside down this way. Push that in, and then... When you slide that, you can kind of hear that clipping sound. That's me just twisting that in place. You can kind of feel and hear that click. That's locked in place. Your bullet or whatever you want to call that's ready to go. Then you can just slide this on top there. And that also is threaded. You can kind of feel a little bit of a catch to it to know. Otherwise, if you had a lid that wasn't threaded, it could just drop right out there. It'll pack up nice into itself. This folds down. And there is a neoprene sleeve. I have one inside. Here, have a close look at this. So this one is my older one, it's about 10 years old, and the globe is broken on it. And that can happen. Yeah. And, uh, so we've got all this stuff you've seen. What's missing is the bottle cap piece, which I think is actually in the neoprene sleeve. But if not, I think I can uh, fiddle and faddle with a beer cap and probably make that happen. So these come out. The uh, little threading that that twists into is unthreaded at this time. And this thing comes out. And that's just an aluminum tube. It does have some spots here for those feet to slide into and kind of lock into place. It's going to give enough room for that glass globe. These things can get bend out of shape and then your lid is sloppy and then you have a hard time with the glass. If they're bent wrong, it can put pressure on the glass. So you can use some multi-tool to fiddle with those. Pop them in there. What I would do is fit this in the way it's supposed to go. Slide the glass in from the underneath and into place here. Then I can sort of slide that all down once it's in the right spot uh, when I'm fitting a glass. I've had some weird issues with that. So here we have a little window so we can see. I'll show you with the candle um, actually how much candle is left if you want to plan for that. You're supposed to be able to get that so you have a window into the solar or into your candle, I guess. So you have a window into your candle here. Um, this part comes off and it's a bit fiddly. It's got these little tabs that fit in there, and you can pull that off and pop that back on. Um, but, yeah, so why place the globe? Well, I could, but it was uh, for another 15 bucks to get a new one, so I thought I would. Then I'd have these parts, because the parts kits cost the same thing, too. And what might I need? Maybe I'd bend something up to crush it up. 
Oh, I thought I'd show off a new one. Yeah, there it is. We'll uh, have a light of that and see what you think. I love the look of flame and that flicker, the warmth. And uh, I don't think, though, you're going to be able to cook a meal on this guy, but maybe it'll send your finger. Uh, I don't even think that it would be strong enough to hold your coffee on that. Uh, not my coffee. I drink a lot of coffee. So more of lighting and just a tiny bit of warmth in a small tent. Not going to heat it, but it is going to take the edge off. Let's have a look at that in the dark. Well, now that it's darker, we'll have a look at lighting this up. Pretty straightforward. you got a few ways you can do that. I'm just going to pull the glass down. That's kind of how I like to do it. And then they'll have a little wick in here, and you can reach in with your match, but I'm going to cheat a little. Well, wow. all the blind guy stuff you got to do to be a blind guy. Try this again here. I think I'm right at the wick. Normally I just grab a match, but I'm trying to do that to show everyone at the same time. There we go. Lit up. I'm going to pull that uh, glass up now. Let's see how much light we get. Now I've got my deck light on. So I'm going to turn that off. So it's not full dark yet, but it is darker out. And you could see just with one candle, I think because of the globe and the reflection and everything else, there's quite a lot of light off of that. So I'm going to back it up and uh, pick it up and we'll have a look at it. But you saw the daytime when we took it apart, had a quick look. I love these little lanterns and there is a magic glow. And watch that flicker. Even in the middle of July, I'm thinking about holiday season when I see that if I'm using that as a light. And I think it does an okay job to play a deck of cards. You have a couple of them. You, know, you could do whatever you need to do around camp on a table. I'm not sure I'd wander the bushes with that, but I bet you could. That's a Yuko original. Thanks for coming along. Please like, subscribe, remix, share. Go out and make your own videos and stay tuned. I have another big surprise coming up, literally. I don't want to give it away. And then eventually I'm going to do a video with all of the lanterns that I have and show them side by side and see if well, we actually see a difference. I really like the warmth. It's cold out here. So I'm, I'm going to go inside. Bye, folks. Well, here it is, the Yuko Candle Lantern, the original, the one that started it all for me and got me excited about lanterns and candle lanterns, whether it was DIY and bushcraft or something purchased from the store. This is not my first one. It's my second one now for this type. About 10 years ago, I got one, and it lasted right up till about a year ago, and then the globe broke. Then I discovered I need to get a new globe, of course, but it was 15 bucks for a new globe or 30 for a new lantern. So I just picked up a new lantern and thought I'd take it out. Give everyone a look along with me. Come on along with me. Let's uh, take a look in the daytime at the Yuko and, and the daylight, and then we'll come back out and light it up. There we go. Lit up. I'm going to pull that uh, glass up now. Let's see how much light we get.